There are a few basic things that all creatures need to survive. For man, it is often said that food, clothing, and shelter are the basics. That's not quite true. A man can live for days without food or water. He can survive indefinitely without clothing or shelter. But there is one other element that is much more critical. Without it, a man will die in a few minutes. It's called air. We tend to forget how vital air is because we can't see it. We breathe it automatically. There's an ample supply for everyone and it's free. Free that is unless you spend a lot of time in a contaminated atmosphere without adequate breathing protection. Then it can cost you your health or your life. When working in a potentially hazardous atmosphere, you must be cautious and you must be alert. Learn how to use the breathing protection device issued by your company, the MSA Pressure Demand Air Mask. It was chosen because it provides the ultimate in respiratory protection for emergency use in atmospheres immediately dangerous to life and health. Regard the Pressure Demand Air Mask as you would any tool. Learn how it works, how to use it properly, and give it the right kind of care. The first thing you should know are its components and their functions. The MSA Pressure Demand Air Mask has five major components. First, the face piece and breathing tube assembly that delivers breathable air to the wearer. Second, the regulator, which performs a dual function. It reduces the high pressure air stored in the cylinder to a proper breathing pressure and it regulates the flow rate of air to meet your breathing requirements while maintaining a positive pressure in the face piece. Third, an audible warning device alerts you when your supply of air reaches a preset level. This warns you that it's time to leave the hazardous area and return quickly to fresh air. Fourth, the air cylinder that contains the reservoir of air and the valve assembly that releases it at high pressure to the regulator. And fifth, the apparatus harness assembly, which includes a metal backplate on which the cylinder is mounted. This must be easy to put on quickly and be comfortable to wear. At this point, you should be aware that there are two types of open circuit self-contained breathing apparatus. The pressure demand type, which we've been discussing here, and the demand type. A pressure demand mask maintains a slight positive pressure in the face piece during both inhalation and exhalation. This prevents small inward leaks into the face piece as can happen with demand type masks. The regulator of a pressure demand apparatus has a spring loaded diaphragm to permit airflow from the cylinder to the face piece whenever you're not exhaling. Likewise, the exhalation valve in the face piece is spring-loaded so that it stays closed to hold the positive pressure created in the face piece by the spring-loaded diaphragm and the regulator. Note that the demand and pressure demand apparatus look almost exactly alike, except that the shape of the face piece exhalation valve in the pressure demand unit is different and the cover of the spring-loaded pressure demand regulator has a raised hub in the center to hold the spring as compared to the flat cover on the demand regulator, which has no spring. Remember these differences. Don't interchange components. A face piece designed for demand operation cannot be used with a pressure demand regulator because air will flow continually through the exhalation valve and quickly exhaust the air supply. And conversely, if a pressure demand face piece is used with a demand regulator, the exhalation resistance will be excessive. When an experienced wearer of demand type apparatus uses a pressure demand unit, he will feel a slight positive pressure inside the face piece and sense an increase in effort as he exhales. These effects will become less noticeable as the wearer grows accustomed to the new device. The model 401 pressure demand air mask is approved for a service life of 30 minutes. So you see, the pressure demand unit has the same service life as a demand unit if there's a good seal on the wearer's face piece. Before you don the apparatus, check the pressure reading on the cylinder valve pressure gauge to make sure the cylinder is charged to full as indicated on the gauge. If the pressure is lower, install a fully charged cylinder before using the device. A lower pressure reading will result in reduced service life. 
There are two methods that can be used to properly don the apparatus. First, remove the face piece from the case and place it out of the way. Be careful though that water spray or other contaminants don't get into the face piece, breathing tube, and perhaps even the regulator. To use the over the head method, reach inside the shoulder straps and grasp the cylinder with both hands. Lift the apparatus straight up and over your head to rest on your back. Bending slightly forward, extend your arms through the shoulder straps and slide the cylinder down your back. The shoulder straps will fall into place. Fasten the chest strap if desired. Grasp the shoulder strap tabs and while leaning slightly forward and moving to an upright position, pull the tabs away from your body. Do a slight body twist to hike the harness up onto your shoulders like a knapsack. Fasten the waist belt securely. Then the chest strap may be adjusted for comfort. Or you can don the apparatus like a vest, putting an arm through each shoulder strap. You then make the proper adjustments for a snug fit. Prior to entering a hazardous atmosphere, check the airflow through the pressure demand regulator. With the red bypass knob and yellow mainline knob closed, place your hand over the regulator outlet. Then reach behind to open the cylinder valve fully by turning the hand wheel at least three turns. The odd alarm should ring briefly as the system is pressurized. To check the airflow to the regulator, open the yellow mainline knob fully and check the gauge on the regulator. It normally indicates the cylinder pressure, plus or minus 100 PSI. It should read 2216 PSI if fully charged. Then, with one hand still covering the regulator outlet, turn off the cylinder valve and watch the pressure gauge on the regulator. The pressure will not drop if the equipment is leaked tight. If the needle drops more than 100 pounds in 30 seconds, the unit must not be used until it has been checked by trained personnel. This is the same procedure used with a demand unit, except that you don't have to cover the regulator outlet with a demand apparatus. But because the pressure demand regulator is spring-loaded, the air will flow automatically if the opening isn't blocked. Take your hand from the regulator outlet and watch the needle on the regulator gauge drop. When it reaches 500 to 540 PSI, the odd alarm should ring. Turn off the mainline valve to conserve the air supply. Now you're ready to put on the face piece. First, loosen the head straps on the head harness so the ends are at the buckles. Hold the face piece at the straps and put your chin in first, then pull the head harness back over your head. Tighten the lower or neck straps, then the temple straps by pulling straight back, not out. Finally, gently tighten the forehead or front strap, if necessary, to position the face piece for best visibility and fit. You're now ready for an important step the test for a proper seal around the face piece. Block off the inlet of the corrugated breathing tube with the palm of your hand and inhale gently. Hold your breath for at least 10 seconds. With a proper seal, the face piece will collapse and remain collapsed for the whole time. If any leakage is detected, readjust the head straps and test again. If this does not correct the leak, the apparatus must not be used until the face piece condition is corrected. You may check the exhalation valve of the face piece by again blocking the breathing tube shut and gently exhaling. If the exhalation valve is not operating properly, a heavy blow-by will be felt at the temples. Any small blow-by at the temples should be disregarded since it can be caused by exhaling too sharply. Remember, this test requires more exhalation pressure with a pressure demand face piece because of the spring-loaded exhalation valve. This means a small blow-by may occur more readily with the pressure demand model than the demand model, but it still should be slight. In normal use, the positive pressure in the face piece reduces the exhalation effort by the wearer. Also, because pressure demand exhalation valves are spring-loaded, a sharp exhalation may be required initially to first crack the valve. Then the valve will function more easily. You must test the complete system for airflow from the cylinder to the face piece under normal and emergency conditions before entering the hazardous atmosphere. Open the cylinder valve fully. Now, connect the breathing tube to the regulator. 
Then open the yellow mainline knob and breathe normally. The regulator should follow the normal breathing pattern with the red bypass valve closed. Next, test the bypass valve by opening it briefly to make certain it's delivering a rush of air. Then, close it. If these tests prove satisfactory, you're ready to enter a hazardous atmosphere. The well-trained user can make these checks in a matter of seconds. While in the hazardous atmosphere, periodically check the pressure gauge on the regulator for the amount of remaining air. And the odd alarm on the MSA apparatus sounds a continuous loud warning for about six minutes when cylinder pressure reaches approximately 540 pounds. It sounds like this. Everyone who wears an air mask should know his emergency procedures as well as he knows how to tie his shoelaces. If you can't draw air through the system, use the emergency bypass system for breathable air while immediately returning to fresh air. The red bypass knob and the yellow mainline knob on MSA regulators have distinctive shapes for quick identification in a smoke-filled or darkened room. And you must learn to recognize them instinctively in an emergency. The regulator's red emergency bypass valve is always kept closed until it's needed. In such emergencies as a damaged pressure gauge or failure of the regulator to function automatically, first open the bypass valve to get breathable air. Close the yellow mainline valve to prevent leakage. Then adjust the bypass valve to provide a direct, controlled airflow from the cylinder to the face piece, like this. Remember, the regulator gauge will now read zero because it is bypassed and you're breathing air directly from the cylinder. You must leave the area immediately since the air supply in the cylinder may be greatly reduced. When your work is finished and you're ready to remove the pressure demand air mask, release the lever that prevents the accidental closing of the cylinder valve handwheel and turn the handwheel clockwise to close the cylinder valve. The remaining air in the high pressure hose is automatically released by the pressure demand regulator and the auto alarm will ring again. You can then close the mainline knob and disconnect the breathing tube without breathing down the regulator. Loosen the face piece by inserting your thumbs under the headband buckles to fully extend the headbands. To remove the face piece, hold the speaking diaphragm assembly and pull the face piece up and away from your face. The complete apparatus may then be taken off and stowed. Now that you understand how to operate a pressure demand air mask, here are some important precautions you must always take. Always don and remove the apparatus in a safe, non-toxic atmosphere. Wear impermeable protective clothing for exposure to gases and vapors which can poison by skin absorption. For example, hydrogen cyanide, which poisons through the skin, and ammonia, which irritates the skin, call for both breathing apparatus and protective clothing. If you experience unusual sensations, such as nausea, dizziness, eye irritation, unusual odor or taste, excessive fatigue, or difficulty breathing, leave the area and return to fresh air immediately. When the breathing apparatus is used in an atmosphere that is immediately dangerous to life or health, Standby personnel must be present with suitable rescue equipment. Devices must not be worn when physical conditions prevent a good face seal. Such conditions are a beard, sideburns, unusual facial contours, a skull cap that projects under the face piece, temple pieces on eyeglasses, or clothing which prevents proper adjustment. Do not break the face-to-face -face piece seal in a contaminated area. The indicated service life of all breathing apparatus is based on government standards. You should not expect to obtain the stated service time from each apparatus every time it is used, because the work you perform may be more or less strenuous than that used in standard tests. When work is more strenuous, the service life of the equipment could be as low as one half the rated life. Other factors that can affect service life are excitement, physical condition of the wearer, and condition of the equipment. Finally, 
follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully and to the letter. Understand the limitations of the device so you don't use it beyond its protective capacity. Training is important, but the breathing apparatus must be in proper operating condition to be used. Therefore, regular inspection and maintenance is essential. Wearing an apparatus that's poorly maintained or not operating properly may be more dangerous than not wearing an apparatus at all because you think you're protected when in reality you are not. Breathing apparatus maintenance practices vary. In some companies, maintenance personnel or other designated persons are responsible. In other instances, users may have to maintain their own apparatus. Regardless of the arrangement, at least one designated person must have sufficient knowledge and training to conduct programs for equipment maintenance and inspection. The cylinder pressure should be checked at least once a week. If the cylinder gauge reading is less than the pressure indicated on the cylinder, replace the cylinder. Relieve the pressure by opening the main line valve. Disconnect the coupling nut at the cylinder valve by hand. Open the cylinder clamp, slide out the cylinder and replace it. Twist the clamp and the cylinder is locked into position again. Be sure the main line valve is closed and reconnect the auto alarm. Immediately after each use, each device must be inspected for damage and cylinder pressure. Then the apparatus is cleaned and sanitized and checked again by sight and sound for normal operation before storing in a ready position. At this time, look for cracked or broken parts in the face piece and breathing tube. Inspections of the exhalation valve must be limited to a visual check. Do not remove the exhalation valve assembly. If scratched, the lens of the UltraView face piece can be replaced easily. Just remove the two screws to release the retaining ring that holds the lens. Cleaning and sanitizing the apparatus is simplified with non-sudsing cleaner sanitizer solution from MSA. Simply add a package of powdered cleaner sanitizer to one gallon of warm water at a temperature not exceeding 120 degrees Fahrenheit. MSA cleaner sanitizer does the job in one step. It will not deteriorate rubber, plastic, glass or metal parts. Thoroughly wash the face piece and breathing tube in the cleaner sanitizer solution. A soft brush or sponge can be used to scrub the soiled face piece and clean the tube. The pieces are then rinsed in plain warm water, again at not more than 120 degrees Fahrenheit, with both the inside and outside of the breathing tube thoroughly rinsed. The breathing tube is then carefully stretched and closely inspected for perforations, small cracks, or signs of wear along the corrugations. The final step is to allow the face piece and the inhalation tube to air dry. Don't attempt to force dry the pieces. If placed near a radiator or in direct warm sunlight, the rubber will deteriorate. Alcohol should not be used as a germicide since it might deteriorate the rubber. In addition to routine inspections and inspections after each use, a more thorough examination and testing procedure must be performed monthly by trained personnel to check cylinders, valves, connections and hoses for air tightness. The operation of the regulator valves must be tested and the apparatus cleaned, sanitized and stored. Trained personnel can test for air leaks between the cylinder and the regulator outlet by observing changes in gauge pressure. First, with the main line valve closed, open the cylinder valve to pressurize the system. Place a hand over the regulator outlet to block it leak tight. Open the main line valve, then close the cylinder valve and compare the regulator gauge to the cylinder gauge. Plus or minus 100 PSI is allowed. Watch the regulator pressure gauge. If the indicator moves toward zero, leaks are present. They may be located by applying soapy water to connections and couplings. Expanding bubbles indicate leaks. To check the odd alarm, take your hand from the regulator outlet and check the regulator gauge for indication of pressure at which the odd alarm rings. The alarm should ring when the gauge shows the cylinder pressure is approximately 540 pounds. 
operation of the mainline valve and bypass valve is tested by putting on the device and operating it normally. Any unusual operating conditions indicate that further checking of the regulator is needed. One word of caution. Untrained personnel must not repair breathing apparatus beyond the manufacturer's recommendations. MSA instructions make this quite clear. Replacement or repairs shall be done only by qualified persons with parts designed for the breathing apparatus. No attempt shall be made to replace parts or to make adjustments beyond the manufacturer's recommendations. Pressure demand regulators or odd alarms shall be returned to the manufacturer or to a trained technician for adjustment or repair. Parts shall not be interchanged among devices of different manufacturers. Users are capable, with adequate training, of conducting routine inspection and simple maintenance. However, disassembly and substantial repair of breathing apparatus must only be performed by trained technicians. Their training has been certified by MSA. Look for this certificate. If there is no authorized MSA service center in your area, return the unit to MSA for prompt service. And we've made it easier to conduct and record the inspections you make after each use. These inspection tags and cards are available from MSA. We've covered a lot of ground in this presentation in a short time. So, before using, inspecting, maintaining, or repairing a pressure demand air mask, you should read the instructions carefully and follow them carefully. The air mask must be used and maintained properly in order to do its job. these creatures breathe air as they find it, except one. Man alone has the ability to control the quality of the air he breathes. <laughs>